What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of 80s Rx for MD. If you are new here, my name is Alicia and I am officially 1A the doctor, aka I just finished my first semester of med school. If you are returning, thank you so much for tuning in. I know it's been a minute since you've heard from me. The semester got a little crazy, honestly. Um, the last module that I just completed was immunology and microbiology, which honestly was incredibly fascinating. So um, I did pretty well. And I just want to share with you exactly how I studied specifically for microbiology. And if you guys are really interested, then I'll do another video on immunology. But the micro is kind of the part that like required a little more finesse, you know. But the first thing that we are going to talk about is resources that I highly, 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 highly recommend. Okay, I think you guys already know what I'm going to say is sketchy medical. Now, if you have been like doing your research and watching vloggers and everything, you've heard of Sketchy. You've probably heard of it a million times and think like, "Ugh, what is the hype? Honestly, I can tell you without Sketchy, I would not have known probably half of the microbes that I learned. And then the other thing that is really important is doing practice questions. This is important for every single module, but I think it really helps you start distinguishing what microbes um, you're dealing with when you start looking at question stems. So the um, resources that I used for my practice questions were USMLE RX, Osmosis, and Exam Master. Anyway, those are the um, resources that I used for practice questions. And then the very last thing that I did was I made a categorized document um, that listed out different microbes that can cause certain presentations. And being able to do that really helps you to move through these questions really quickly because if you start seeing a lot of like, oh, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, you already have maybe four or five microbes in your head and you can stop thinking about the others. And now you're just looking for those in the answer choices and you're also looking for evidence of one of those in the question stem. It just makes you very efficient. So let's actually get into my method top to bottom for studying and passing my microbiology module. But I want to start from the very beginning. Um, so yes, this is Canvas. This is what my school uses to communicate with us and to upload everything. And so I usually have to take these to PDF Expert because a lot of my professors upload PowerPoints. I don't know why, they just don't like uploading PDFs. Um, and I use Notability and Notability has a hard time opening the PowerPoints. If you have another preferred iPad app for note taking, um, that makes it easier so you don't have to do this middle step, then go ahead and use that. But um, I'm going to use this method. And then I'll hit the three dots and hit share. Now it's a PDF and I will share it to Notability and pick whichever uh, folder I want. I'm going to say create a new note because I have another note by this same name. Um, and yeah, I'm ready to import it to Notability. So of course during lecture, um, you're going to pay attention to everything, but at the end of the day, what's going to be most important with microbiology is going to be, you know, being able to, um, identify a certain microbe, knowing how it presents, all of that good stuff. So I'm going to pay very special attention to which microbes he focuses on. So like, look here, there's something here about, you know, different types of microbes and so if you've never taken microbiology before you have no idea what type of information is important um, but I'm telling you if they characterize anything like this gram positive the shape um, other characteristics that's important so you know I would go through and I would listen to lecture and you want to find anywhere where your professor goes into like detail on a given microbe I mean like one slide for that microbe or even two or three slides in the human body so I would go through, yada yada, I'm waiting for a page. This was a lot of like introductory material before, ah, here we go. So our professor was amazing and gave us these little cheat sheets. When you come to a page like this, either that has a list of important microbes, star it. And here's another one, star it. And then highlight, what's the difference between these two pages? Can be grown in diagnostic lab, difficult or impossible to grow. So I'm going to just highlight that. And this is uh, a second generation iPad Pro. Screen is nice and big. I love it. So these are all important things. I'm not skipping these because they're not important. But um, 
if you have not already seen my Anki method, then I would do my Anki method for all of these slides because you still need to learn all this stuff. But when it comes to specifically like learning all the different types of toxins and everything, um, or the different types of microbes and what they do, now here, here we, we're getting to something important. So we have this whole slide is dedicated to diphtheria. Then we have the next slide is dedicated to its toxin. And then the next slide is dedicated to its mechanism. So, and then look, more slides. This is like four or five slides on the same thing. I would think this is gonna be important. So I'm gonna star this, diphtheria. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> this is cholera down here, but anyway. Then he talks about cholera toxin, gives us the whole mechanism. I would say that's pretty important. So I'm gonna star that. Oh, what is this? Exfoliative toxin, Staph aureus. Wow, that looks intense. But it's something he spent an entire slide on. So it's probably important. Okay, so all of these slides, this whole case history, this case history, and this case history, these have something in common and it's Staph aureus. I better start that. That looks important. This is a very great summary slide here. E. coli. You get it? So that's the process you're going to go through. And after you've completed the entire lecture, which this was kind of a long one, then what you're going to do is you're going to um, hit share. Share to. Um, we're going to share it to Notability. We're going to create a note. And we got to name it something different because we don't want to replace the other one. Right now what we're doing is making a high yield PowerPoint that we will use when we go into Sketchy. And you do not want to do all pages. You want to pick the pages that were marked as important. So I'm going to deselect all. And now I'm going to look for those pages that I was like, oh, this is something special. Here's one. Here's one. Mm -hmm. Actually, so we've picked that back and now we're going to say import. So what do we have here? Here's our new document and it's streamlined, okay? So at this point, you're now ready to go into Sketchy and um, just identify these microbes. So now we're gonna switch to the computer. All right, so after I prepared my streamlined document, the next thing that I would do is go to Sketchy and you want to pull up your document. So as you can see, there's Sketchy Micro, Sketchy Farm, Sketchy Path, all that good stuff. Um, so let's go Sketchy Micro. We have a gram positive cocci here. So under bacteria, here we go, Staph aureus. Okay, so we would watch the video and I like to just open in a new window so this list stays up and I can come back to it and just go through. And, um, you know, this is what the final sketch ended up looking like. And the video is, I think, 11 minutes. And when you go through this video, they will explain to you what all of their symbols mean in this image means. And the, uh, the images really make sense. That's one thing I really like about Sketchy. I have used Picmonic as well. And that was the only benefit I found there was that the videos were so short that you could watch a million of them. But a lot of times the scenes that they had uh, portrayed in their videos kind of didn't have a lot of connectivity they didn't make sense and so in my head I would just see a random like image that did not make any sense to me or like a part of an image and I couldn't really decipher what it was sketchy was just the opposite of that um, the images always made sense and there was a reason why every symbol worked for that image as well as for the microbe so after you go through and you watch however many videos you're going to do in that given day um, the next thing you want to do, you want to use a pre-made Anki deck because you do not want to spend time making a million Anki cards. Oh, also, something I forgot to mention is if when you're watching this video, you want to be double checking that everything your professor emphasized over here was mentioned in the video. Because remember, sometimes professors just like to say extra stuff and if they emphasize it, they are definitely going to talk about it. So I would recommend Anything that wasn't mentioned, you would highlight. So I don't know that this was explicitly mentioned in the video, so I'm going to be like, ah, oh, I'm going to highlight that. All right, so I have now highlighted what wasn't mentioned over here because now I am going to go to Anki. 
And the key with Anki is making sure that you are not overdoing it on how many cards you have. I know this is scary, right? This is just, don't worry about that. Anyway, so as you can see here, I have some pre-made Anki decks. Sketchy Farm, Sketchy Micro, and On King. Then Fall 2021 is all the decks that I made for myself off my lecture material. And so the reason why you want to get a pre-made Anki deck and why you want to pay attention to what was not explicitly mentioned in your lecture is because you only want to make cards for those facts that your professor talked about in addition to what Sketchy talked about. Because all of the Sketchy facts are already going to be in an Anki deck. So now let's talk about where you get this Anki deck from. You're gonna type in on, uh, what is this? Sketchy Micro Pepper deck. And this first one on the list, AnkiWeb.net, go there. And this shows you an example of some of the scenes that they have in the videos. Scroll all in here, you can hit download. I am not going to actually let it download because I have all these cards already. But once it's done, you would click on it and it would open it in Anki. So now let's go to Anki and I will show you a little bit of how that works. So let's find our Staff Aureus. Here we are. And so for each card, I love that they include, when they have the question, the question's up here, they include kind of the call out that helps you remember that fact. And then at the very bottom, they have the entire image. Hem hemolysis for Staff Aureus is beta hemolytic. And they're showing me that symbol and then the whole entire card. So that is all I'm going to do each video. You're going to want to do the sketchy cards for it. And then... Um, up here under, you know, your lecture decks or whatever, not week seven, week six, um, or no, it was under week five, you're then going to want to make cards under that lecture deck that have these little facts that were not included in Anki, and that way you minimize your card count and you still cover all of the information. So that's kind of like step one and maybe step two as well. All right, now let's talk about question banks. We'll start with USMLE RX. So I asked QMAX. So USMLE RX is one of the resources that is on the more affordable end. That's a relative term, but you're gonna go in here and hit create test. Um, and we'll just start with easy medium. And you can choose used, unused, whatever, all next. Next semester when we start systems. But I liked going by first aid topics because I also use USMLE RX, or no, I use the first aid book to do microbiology. Um, micro. And I don't usually do more than like 25 questions in one sitting um, because I just found I, I get really fatigued, which maybe you should do more. Your tests are going to be more, but. All right. So, you know, you go in, you pick the question, and it's really cool because they'll tell you concise but thorough explanation as to why that's the right answer. And then for each of these, they will tell you why it's not the correct answer. And I love this feature. So at the bottom of the page, they will actually include the page in first aid that corresponds to that question. These are some great images. Because, like, look at this. This is an amazing, concise summary. This was probably, like, an hour-long lecture. Yeah, we actually had a whole lecture about antibiotics, their structure, how they work, what they target. And this just, I love images like this. This just makes it so clear. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, you hit in test, and I didn't do any questions, so it's going to be a horrible, horrible score. And it'll tell you, um, like, what categories you got you know, a lot of write in, which ones maybe you missed all of them. So you can kind of have a breakdown of like, oh man, I'm, I'm horrible osmosis. Osmosis was provided by my school, so I will have to insert the price there. You would go over to questions, very similar format, step one in classes. And you can choose, let's do medium, and let's find our microbiology. So again, it has a breakdown. And here we go, we can change that and build quiz. So yeah, once you finish that question, it has a similar format where it will tell you what percentage of people got that correct. And it'll give you a little summary here. The advantage with 
Um, questions are fine as well. And so, yes, you would go through this whole thing, yada, yada, you end the test, and it'll also give you stats, but it will not give you the same detailed breakdown that USMLE does in terms of like, oh, these are the types of questions you miss, yada, yada, but still very helpful. And the osmosis questions are, are a little tricky. I like that. And then finally, we have exam master. So again, we're going to go to create exams. Um, if you do biomedical sciences, that's not going to be as challenging. That's going to literally just test your basic fundamental knowledge of do you know these concepts or not. Uh, I highly recommend when you're preparing for an exam, you go down here to USMLE and do the board prep because the questions you're going to get are going to be uh, basic sciences, micro, and they have a very um, <clears throat> substantial breakdown there. I'm just going to see and we'll go at it. And and this site gives you very thorough explanations. I would do take learning. Oh man, I was not right. So <laughs> I didn't even read the question. It will show you, if you hit show explanation, it will show you what the correct answer is. And so you go through this and you hit finish and it will show you how many you answered, how many you answered correctly, exam score, all of that. Again, uh, here we go. We have the topical breakdowns. So all of these resources really have very similar formats, uh, but I do recommend using at least two question banks just because the way they ask questions may be different, the questions they ask may be different, and you want as much exposure as you can possibly get. So that's kind of the second leg of my studying and preparation and then the final the final uh method that i used was creating a document that made all this a little bit more practical so as you can see here i have you know things that cause upper respiratory uh tract infections or or those types of symptoms and then i have it broken down by things that commonly cause sore throat things that commonly cause runny nose commonly cause otitis media sinusitis then I have like a distinctive coughs, pertussis, and croup. Um, and right over here, you see the things that are going to really, really distinguish that pathology. Um, so heterophile antibodies, nine and a half times out of 10. If it's Epstein-Barr, they're gonna have something about heterophile antibodies. Also, some things are more common in certain age groups. Anyone can have Epstein-Barr, but it is so much more common in adolescents because they be kissing. Treat it all. Um, so yeah, everything you see in red is just kind of, this is something that will really, really, really help. It's pretty much the end of my method and how I approached microbiology. So we're just going to do a quick summary and I will be out of here, guys. If you have made it to the end of this video, I have given you everything I have, all my secrets for microbiology. Um, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. If there are any questions you have about any of the methods that I showed you, if you want that Anki deck, the one that has the updated cards for Sketchy, definitely leave a comment below. I can send that to you. Um, this has been fun. Honestly, I'm so cheery because the semester's over and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm free for the next two weeks. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.